do a reactor core. Reactor core goes critical, and boom. Look at that. Just that easy, folks. Welcome back, everybody, to the show. I am your host, as always, Jay Villain, a.k.a. That Villain Jay. And tonight we have a special treat for you. Yes, we do. Um, because we are running a little something called Artisan. Um, and Artisan is going to be the uncommon only. Okay, so this is a zero rare. Uh, this is a zero rare build right here. No mythic rares, no rares at all. It is only common and uncommon card. The cheapest cards you can get. Well, not the cheapest. Cheapest and second cheapest. I love artisan builds because you have to rely on good game mechanics, good gameplay, and just outplay your opponent and outmaneuver them against all of their super high power cards. You can't just wait for a bomb to drop, uh, just a super powerful card to come and save you. You know, you're not running a tracks and just doing everything you can to get tracks out. So this is cheap. This is for the beginners. This is for the starters. And it's really fun. So before we get into this one, uh, I need to do something for me, which is, of course, tenderly press that like button. Gently press that subscribe button. Or else you will be attacked by the like and subscribe. It's going to happen. Um, you're going to get ripped apart by the like and subscribe by not liking and subscribing to the channel. Join us here. We'd love to have you there. Um, you check out, uh, join us on stream every night at twitch.tv slash thatvillainj for all live stream goodness. We would love to have you there live and in person uh, on our Twitch and you can hit that bell and join us on our YouTube. We do go live on YouTube as well, so don't miss out on that. You can check out our Discord community for all the latest news and information uh, for everything that's going on. Post your decks. If you want to post your own deck, show me one. It's got to be in the Discord. That's where I look at them. Memes, anything else, any comments you want, uh, they're going to all be right there. Um, and, of course, this deck and all the other ones that I built are available down below on my Aether Hub. So if you want to follow the links in the description, down right below the Aether Hub, it'll be everything that you need is going to be right there. So... What are we talking about when we talk about cheap death? And I want to tell you, again, I want to reiterate, because a lot of people are going to say, hey, how I know, I know, who's going to be the comment that's going to go, hey, how come you didn't add this super powerful card? How come you didn't add Ojer Axanil, because that's going to make it so much better? Um, or, oh, yeah, how come you didn't add him? It's a mythic rare. Common and uncommon only. So we're going to start with our removal package. It's going to be two cut down, three bitter triumph, because I really want to deal with planeswalkers, uh, two go for the throats. You're saying that's not that much removal, Jay. It, you know, we kind of want to stop aggro because we do take a little bit to get set up. But I think that's going to be more than enough to stop whatever anybody's got going on and to kill the essential things that are really kind of uh, disrupting the lines of play that we have. We do have Blood Tide Harvester. We can sacrifice for more removal, but that's kind of later on. And we have self-sacrifice explosion stuff um, like Callus Sword. So there is a decent amount of removal in this, but direct removal, cut down, bitter triumph, and go for the throat for your pleasure right there, except you can change them out for whatever you need. Voldaren Epicure is the best way to put one ping down and then blood token up, which you'll have a sacrifice outlet for your Oni Cult Anvils later on, which is going to be super effective. It also lets you have, uh, it also creates an artifact on the battlefield, which is going to be good for Dragon Spark Reactor, and it deals damage. It's a little piece, uh, it's a little guy on the board that you can just work with, or a girl rather, I think it's a female vampire. Um, <clears throat> we already talked about Bitter Triumph. Kel's Sword is going to be an actual win con for us, okay? So I want you to keep an eye on this guy right here. One black and one. What we want is burn together. This is a brutal, brutal card. Um, one red. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to, en to any other target. Any other target means face, okay? It can go directly to your opponent, and then you sacrifice it. So you basically sacrifice it. It's a fling effect. That's what we call those in magic is fling effects because that's what it does. Fling is sacrifice creature, deals power to anything. It's weirdly worded, but whatever. What we want to do with that fling is you're going to see down here, Bloody Betrayal, uh, Furnace Reigns, and Twisted Fealty. These are three different what we call grabbing cards. We take possession of somebody else's. The way that we can get a huge win con off is by taking possession of somebody else's card and then hitting them with it. Maybe they don't have any blockers because they only had one blocker. Like imagine a pugnacious, um, you know, a pugnacious uh, head butter. Uh, we grab it, um, that dinosaur, we grab it, attack with it, hit for that many, and then fling it and do that many again directly to face. That is what we want. 
The regular version of Cal's Self Sword, it enters the battlefield with a 1 1 counter on it for each creature that died under your control this turn. Great way to, um, again, if you're sacrificing a lot of creatures, if you're doing a lot of them, yeah, if you're sacrificing creatures, it's a great way to get a nice, you know, decent sized creature on there for two. Um, Dragon Spark Reactor is another one that's going to be great, that's going to go well with Blood Tide and Oni Cult and all that. One red and one. Whenever Dragon Spark Reactor or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a charge counter on Dragon Spark Reactor. So it charges up. So it starts with one charge, and every time an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, uh, it goes up higher. You sacrifice it for four, you set the reactor core to critical, and then it deals a number of damage equal to the number of charge counters on it to target player directly to face, and of course, up to one creature. Um, really, really, really good stuff right there. Another great way that you can do a sacrifice explosion. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a really good stuff right there. And the way we're going to get all those artifacts on there, well, they're an Epicure creating an artifact. Blood Tide Harvester, one uh, Rakdos Colors, one black and one one red, three, two. When Blood Tide Harvester enters the battlefield, we create a treasure token. That, of course, is going to be what? A artifact entering the battlefield which will charge the reactor um so it's a three two this guy's a three two which is really good i really like sacrifice he's not actually a bad choice to sacrifice with cal cell sword because he does do three damage to a target and that is actually super effective that can actually win you a game uh so solid and then of course you can sacrifice him and target target creature gets negative x negative x until the end of turn with the equal the amount of blood tokens we have we could potentially have a lot of blood tokens with this we can generate a lot of blood with this so we can kill something big negative six negative six with only three blood tokens which is useful um great card this card sees play like in every format like it's such a good rakdos card early on i mean a three two two drop is already really good that generates a blood token a sacrifice outlet is fantastic oni cult anvil there it is one black and one red i'm sure you've seen this before it's been popular it goes in and out of popularity but it is an extremely cool card um it is an artifact. Guess what? When it hits the battlefield, it'll charge Dragon Spark. That's a good synergy right there. Whenever one or more artifacts uh, artifacts you control leave the battlefield under your uh, during your turn, create a one one colorless art construct until the to artifact creature token. You create one of these little uh, your little action figure onis, which is really really cool. Um, this ability only triggers once each turn. So each time anything, any kind of artifact leaves the battlefield, you only get one of these little guys. But the more anvils you have, anytime any one, you'll get like two or three, depending on how many anvils you have. Then you can sacrifice an artifact. Only called anvil deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Great one ping gain and drain effect right there, which is really, really useful. Um, so then once you have blood to start the forge, like you have a blood token to start the forge up, you can get almost on an infinite loop. You can sacrifice a guy, another guy pops up, they do 1-1. One, one. Sacrifice a guy, they do 1 damage and it pops up. You get more and more and more and more and more and more. And it just is a steady, steady drain. Constant availability of blockers, constant availability of creatures to attack. Really, really, really effective combo of sacrifice, gain and drain, all that. Especially if you're just using the blood tokens that you generate and you're building up a little Oni army uh, to kind of swing in. Really good stuff. If we're going to be sacrificing creatures... Guys, this is a common card, and I think it's underrated in my opinion. Desperate Farmer and Depraved Harvester right here. One black, two two, lifelink. Whenever another creature you control dies, transform Desperate Farmer. Uh, really cool. Guess what? Everything that we have is going to die eventually. Why? We're sacrificing it to Onicol Anvil. Even if you sacrifice for the Onicol effect, one of your little guys right there, um, that counts to flip Desperate Farmer. It 100% counts. So all of a sudden, we have a 4-3 lifelink and even so with that power uh we could fling that lifelink we could throw him and do even more damage so it's a really really cool stuff plus i love the story that this tells and i love the artwork man all the sheep watching that his the poor farmer's horse died and then he uses necromancy to bring it back and um you know the sheep are all gone and now it's uh it's he's surrounded by the crows just great stuff right there great storytelling super cool card if you're going to be sacrificing little creatures you're basically getting a four three lifelink for three mana which is not bad at all at the cheap rate now we have our grabs uh bloody betrayal furnace reigns and twisted fealty all of them gain control of target creature untap it it gains haste until the end of turn that's your standard one red and two grab uh card right there dig possession card which is a rakdos uh, i mean a mono red thing and a rakdos thing this one creates a wicked roll which is going to be get one one and when a creature dies put in a graveyard each opponent loses one life um which is great for pinging out somebody for one life. Furnace Reigns, 
Whenever it deals damage, you get a treasure token, which is an artifact, which is not a bad one either. Tre uh, charges Dragon Spark Reactor, helps us ramp. We don't really need a ramp, so it doesn't matter. Uh, or gives us more fuel for the Onicol Anvil, because it's an artifact that we can sacrifice. Or Bloody Betrayal, which is, of course, the same thing, except at the end you create a blood token. How I'm showcasing all of them. If you want to... Um, uh, if you want, if you like, oh, I want Bloody Betrayal because I want to go Blood, or I want to go Furnace Rains because, you know, I want more token, or I want to go Twisted Fealty, I want to put uh, Wicked Tokens, and that way when I sacrifice stuff and I lose those Wicked Tokens, I can put Wicked uh, Aura Tokens on one of my small creatures, sacrifice them, they lose an additional life. Any one of them will be perfectly fine. Um, all of them will work well. I'm just kind of giving you a showcase, so you can you can splash out in any one of them. There, some are common, some are uncommon, so it's going to depend on your wiles. Last card we have here is the Scythe Claw Raptor, which I think is underrated to be honest. One red and two. This is kind of a control trick right here. Whenever a player casts a spell, if it's not their turn, Scythe Claw Raptor deals four damage to them. Now remember, this is player, not opponent. If you cast a spell on your off turn, you will take four damage. You just have to be aware of that. But if people keep counterspelling you or knocking back or doing stuff on the, on not your turn, he's a great way to kind of punish them for off playing uh, playing off off their turn with four damage, which is not in, insignificant. He's also in a very aggressive four three. That's a lot of damage. I mean, I'd love to swing in with him, play a removal, swing in with him for four, and then sacrifice him for four with a Callus Cell Sword. That's a pretty good combo right there. So he's a nice little addition right there from Ixalan to kind of help. Um, deal with those off uh, off turn plays and all kind of other stuff that your oppo might do just to get that damage down, get him down to the last little bit and finish him off. Nine swamps, uh, nine swamps, ten mountains, bloodfell caves is going to be our uncommon mana. Probably the first thing that I would do if you wanted to do something to enhance this. I know people are going to ask. Put in a better mana base so you have a more effective mana for you. That's that's what I would invest in first before even adding anything else. So what we're we looking at here, 18 creatures, dinosaurs, humans, peasants, soldiers, and vampires, seven instants, six sorceries, six artifacts, 23 lands altogether with a 2.2 average. Maybe you can go down to 22 lands. I don't know. Give it a shot. Tell me how you do on this one. It is very cheap. It is completely artisan. Great one to have in your back pocket in case they run a midweek magic that's artisan as well. That's not a bad idea because uh, they do do that, which is uncommon, uncommon, and common only, zero rares. And that's kind of my thing. Sideboard, um, I kind of told you basically the sideboard is have other furnace rains, maybe have other forms of removal. That's really all you need to do. Uh, that's what we're looking at right there. It, uh, we're gonna start it in unranked just to see how it plays, and then we'll take it into ranked and see how it goes from there. We might be able to win a game in ranked even. Even in platinum, uh, it can still score some wins. So let's do it, boys. Here we go. Let's get into the game. We're gonna do unranked first, I think. Standard play, we're gonna go unranked. Let's get into it, guys. Welcome to Magic. If this is your first time or your first deck playing, leave a comment. Tell me, do you like this one? Do you want more uh, budget decks? I'll do them. I don't care. I love budget. Here we go. That'll be fun. give it a shot what's the difference i genuinely don't know what's the difference between pioneer and explorer there's just not there's not the same amount of cards is that the only difference guardians helm for mirrodin Ooh, so i can actually grab him so this is fun. We're gonna do Furnace Rains. Boom. Okay. Pioneer goes fast farther. Okay, so yeah. So that's why they're so that's why they're trying to um basically make it so that they can get it in again, huh? Desperate farmer. Whenever a creature you control dies, transform. Boom. Okay, we have another furnace rains. 
Vushkomian whatever for Mirrodin. I'm gonna get a Mirrodin equipment deck. Interesting. Um, no blocks. We'll take it. We'll take the four. Boom. Boom. Let's do Furnace Rains. For that guy. And we got traded. It worked out pretty good, man. I'm not gonna lie. This fucker worked out pretty fucking snazzy-like. Ooh. Okay, Blood Blood Aspirant. I think he's gonna be in for a shock here. My turn. Desperate Farmer again. That was a good ad, by the way. Not to... Not to toot my own horn too much. But Desperate Farmer flips... Another creature you control dies. Um, let's do Spine Claw Raptor. Let's do this. Pioneer meta. Yeah, I mean, those old formats are even worse than standard when it comes to the turn two claps, you know what I mean? Like, they just absolutely fucking crush you. Flip. Okay. Guys call Raptor, but not their turn deals four damage to them. I like that. That's a good anti meta card right there. I forgot about that guy. Um interesting. Interesting. Yeah, he's wondering what to do here. Play that on that. Okay, cool. He's gonna play another four mirrored in. Nice. Boom. He's gonna swing. Doesn't have trample. That's his biggest problem. That's his biggest problem right now. Doesn't have fucking trample. gonna push why the fuck not yeah he's gonna lose it all he just said I don't care I'll lose it all I'll lose it all man I don't give a shit He's gonna load this one guy up. Yeah, there we go. Doesn't have haste. Does that have anybody who give him haste? Gold Warden's helm. Equip. for equipment resolve my turn did that we'll flip this guy Boom. we'll flip this guy Boom. no attacks all right we gotta wait because he's gonna try to get us with one we gotta surprise him Ooh, Elspeth Resplendent. Okay, we can't let him gain life here, so luckily we kept that. Hopefully he's gonna commit. He's gonna commit with something. Show 
first strike. Life link. Yeah. We're gonna take it. Oof. How do you like that, folks? How do you like that? No rares. Zero rares. Zero rares. Back in action. Okay, yeah, that's why I need a little inspiration there, man. When you're when you're stuck in a box, bro, you gotta inspire yourself. Thank you for following, X Clias. Thank you for coming by, man. Exclies, thank you for fucking subscribing. Welcome to the show. We're doing un we're doing artisan right now, which I love. I love artisan. Um, we're doing rich. Probably getting favorable matchups. Probably you you do occasionally when when you don't have rares in your deck. It's like oh yeah, well we'll put them against not hyper power, and it's a pretty strong deck. Like we can see that. Interesting. All right, so we'll go with Blood Tide. I don't like that I'm not first, but yeah, there is, there's barely anything in this. Um, okay, white, boom. Boom. Pop. How you doing, ex -liz? Feeling good, man? Is he gonna be the one to play the removal on it? Yeah, he's gonna play direct removal. Twisted Fealty. Don't want to do that yet. I'll do that. Okay, we're going to put down Dragon Spark and then Oni Cult. And I think you're going to see something cool here. Watch you on YouTube and just having to click the Twitch link and I was live. Well, welcome to the show, man. Mr. Exiles. Exiles. Oh, it looks like I gained a sub in the last couple of minutes, too. So that must have been your subscription. Uh, what video were you on, out of curiosity? Feeling food, feeling fine. It's Saturday night. You're right. F you, Lewis. See, man, it comes out so aggressive every time. If I'm like, hey, man, thanks for the advice, F you, Lewis. It just comes out weird, right? Uh, ooh, okay, so we have, uh, we have an option to do something real silly here. Let's put that down. Whenever an opponent deals damage, you lose position for this, just a sacrifice. Okay, so we're gonna do Dragon Spark. Boom, one charge. Two charge. Turn. Goal Kappa. What's up, Goal Kappa? Borrow time. Who's he putting in the boo boo hole? Who's he putting in there? He's putting. Uh, he's putting the dragon spark in there. He's putting the all spark in there. That's funny. Boom.
Gain control of a target creature until the end of turn. Untap that creature. Gains haste. Create a wicked roll and put it on somebody. All right, we'll put the wicked roll on you. Swing. Then we're gonna explode. Target creature I control, choose another target. It's gonna be you, boom. Then we're gonna sacrifice you. There we go. Now we're talking, right? Now we're talking. Popped up in your feed. Night stream with Jay Villain. Oh, okay. Yeah, I stream on YouTube and on Twitch for your convenience. But thank you for coming by, man. I hope you like some of my channels. Um, Sunder, okay. And he's gonna incubate. Sunder. Feel the Sunder. Norn's Inquisitor. Incubate. Let's do that. Let's do that. Feel the sunder. All right. Boom. We're gonna go in. I think we got him. I think we got him with Kalisel Sword. As a matter of fact. Oof. Okay, good hit there. Oof. Unless he has something huge. Unless he has a massive play here. I think he's cooked. I think he is rightly cooked. If you don't have a good play here. He's gonna artifact transform. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna flip him too. Norn's Inquisitor. Man, Norn's Inquisitor. Can I tell you something about Norn's Inquisitor? Does this, does this dude not have like ridiculous levels of drip look at this guy man look at this fucking outfit that he went to war with bro that dude is just that dude is look at that man nobody's styling like fucking norn's inquisitor all right enough of that um so we'll do um we'll do this our creature i control to the power And all I got to do now, put on that. Unless he has an instant that gains him life. No, he does not. Okay. All right. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Again, zero rares. Zero. None. Not even in the fucking mana base. So, uh, that's good stuff right there. Inga and Essica. Oh, it's Wayne Reynolds. I know that art anywhere. Yeah, they're doing crazy stuff right there. Goal Kappa. When your goal is to Kappa, it's Goal Kappa time. That's not actually too terrible. We'll see if we can keep it going. Doof. Boof. Well, I'm glad you're here, Excli. Excli. Am I saying it right? Excilize? Excli. Exclize? I'm probably not saying it correctly. Let's be honest. I'm saying it wrong. Uh, let's do that one. Oh, this is probably infinite loot. I have no sacrifice plays here, which kind of sucks. I have all my fucking, uh... I have, uh... I can 
can do that. It's poison? This deck is poison. Girl, I must warn you. Draw two cards and lose. Exiles just spelt funny. Okay. All right, that makes sense then. Blood betrayal. Does he have the protection? That's the real question. Can control turret creature. Wicked roll. Probably has no. He don't have the protection. Okay. Boom. Bop. Kisser, misser, this deck is poison. Poison. Pup, 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 poison. Poison. He's gonna make a fight. Yep. So we're going to have to do Furnace Reigns on that guy. Dark creature I control. Just any other creature. Five damage. Auto pay. Get rid of blood betrayal. Desperate farmer. Rot priest. Ooh, yeah, he's gonna get me out here. Prologue to Pharesis. Yeah, he's gonna get me good here, boys. Close though. I'm I, honestly, I'm not that mad. Again, I want to reiterate, I have no rares in this deck. Nebraska's fault. Yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, damn close, but there, but for the grace of God, I think uh, that we almost got him there against a very tough poison deck. That again, a lot of rares in there. The fact that we could get what we could get, even with as basic as we had really showing off some some flexibility in the build um which is pretty good I'm, I, honestly i'm not mad with that performance being perfectly honest so you know all right let's keep it going <clears throat> nadrak Oof, a lot of, a lot of red there. Okay, so I don't, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of, uh, we'll get rid of one of those. <clears throat> blood betrayal. I don't know if we want blood betrayal. Might not be the best bet. Let's get rid of Blood Betrayal. Desperate Farmer. Apparently we're just not going to get mana. Wolves. Interesting. Okay. So the mana base is fucked.
All right, let's keep it going. Okay. All right. Kamigawa. Wait, is this Kamigawa? No, no, this is the Cosmium. I saw the glowing purple and I thought Kamigawa, but that's not right. Hey, look, it's my old avatar. I like these Art Deco ones, though. They're good sleeves. This is Ixalan. Did anybody ever explain Cosmium? I feel like we've had a mysterious substance in like five different sets and they just are happy with not really explaining it. I think Skythecall Raptor, if he's gonna blow in Selesnia, Skythecall Raptor is gonna come in a lot of handy. He's playing Sultai. Okay, we get our anvil out. Okay, so we can actually grab Sentinel next turn and then sacrifice it, which wouldn't be terrible. It's a good card. Unless he plays something bigger here. Merfolk Cave Diver, very nice. map token so if he makes a map token we can block that boom okay so if we do this we do this we swing in we hit sacrifice already got him. Like, legit already got him. Shit went so fucking sideways for him right there. so sideways. I don't know why he didn't block. He thought he would be able to... He thought he, he thought he was doing something. Cut down. Did a damage to himself there. Alright, well, we're just gonna blow up Scytheclaw Raptor. I mean, yeah, he's done. He's cooked. He is cooked. Doesn't matter. He can hit me for 4 a.m. It ain't gonna be nothing. Okay, so all we have to do is crack the anvil crack the map and then we can just sacrifice our own Scythe Claw directly to his face boom look at that 
Dunzo. Don't let the attacks through, man. Yeah, the amount, you, you can do a lot. You can do a lot with the Force Sacrifice Flip. I mean, it's a great combo just to get off regularly, you know? All right, good stuff. We win another one, we'll take it into, we'll take it into ranked. We'll see what happens if we take it into plat. Been having a hard time in plat, but we'll give it a shot. Briarwood. Spell it. It? No, he's not. Was he just gonna play removal? Count Cell Sword. hold a lot in our hand because he's got board wipes. We don't want to play out too much. He's probably going to wipe us out. Dreams of stealing oil. Ooh, creature or artifact. Hopefully he won't get rid of Callus. He'll probably get rid of blood tie because that's when he knows. Yep. I don't think he read Callus. Just this easy, folks. Let's see if he has the removal. Let's see if he has the counter spell. Nope. He did not. Didn't even get anything out. Asper down. Asper down. That's how quickly it can work, guys. If they don't have an answer very quickly. Um, again, I really want to reiterate. This is completely artisan. This is 100% um, artisanal, uh, like from a local bakery. That's how artisan it is. No, nothing good. Chimney of the Inner Sky, nah. I love the art of this card, Malicious Eclipse. All right, here we go. Oh, shoot, I said we go into ranked. All right, we'll go into ranked after this one. Not, not a bad opener. We haven't been able to hit the reactor core yet. Um, which is... This kind of sucks. I think Desperate Farmer's underrated. I think in any kind of big life gain deck, he's underrated. I know he's a 2-2, but it's so easy to flip him nowadays just with any time a creature you control dies. Like, a 4-3 lifelink for, for 3 is, is not a bad deal. Like... Especially in a knight deck. If you had more knights, um, if you had like a bigger knight capabilities, it would be the Jarek, which is the no, that's Darjack, but it reminds me of the Jarek, which is the um, the chess game from Star Wars. That's how big of a nerd I am. In case you wanted to know. This guy's just gonna look at me. Keep it. I think this guy is just not here. 
Or if he is, he's doing the old fake out shake out. Um, let's start with Bloodfell since he's going to start with Waterfront. Maybe we'll open with Dragon Spark since we haven't hit a reactor core yet. We're, we're going to be putting down a lot of artifacts. Maybe we'll open with that. He's just running down the clock for no reason. Okay, let's do Dragon Spark. No. Off. Okay. We do Oni. Uh, we'll do Blood Tide. Do Blood Tide, yes. Dragon Spark Build and Boost. Okay. Okay, um, Stinging Hive Master. Alright, pretty threatening guy right there. So that's gonna be an artifact. Boom. We're gonna crack this artifact. Boom. That creates mites. I've never really seen that one before. Let's see if he wants to, um, see if he wants to lose it. We're gonna challenge him. Does want to lose it. Okay. Okay, I got him. Agrogen communion. Dragon Spark is building boosts pretty good, though. countered. If I don't pull a mana, I'm worried I'm going to get countered here. Hmm. Why is he playing so slow?
What we gotta do is build boost, unfortunately. Absolutely have to have another removal card. We also we also need four to activate. Uh, we desperately desperately need mana. Like we gotta pull a mana. So if he doesn't poison me out right now, the reactor core is going to go critical on him. I think it may already go critical, depending. He's got he's got to do three more poison right now. He could proliferate twice. No, that's not it. He already he already lost. I don't even need to cast a spell to get him. Do it, reactor core. Reactor core goes critical, and boom. Look at that. Just that easy, folks. Very nice. All right. Let's go into, uh, let's go into ranked. Let's see if we can really do something. Let's see if it really works. Counterspell, perhaps. That perhaps was unintended. Okay. I gotta do Scythe Claw. Hopefully, he'll put down. Hopefully, he'll put down something here. Let's do this. Guys, both, 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 hit, pop. Okay. So 
So he's waiting for a reaction. That's only going to get me down to 20. Or he's going to board wipe or exile or something. Yeah, he's going to sunfall. Hopefully he'll play like Memory Deluge again here. To 40. Okay, yeah, that'll work. <clears throat> uh, hopefully, if he doesn't have a counter spell, I feel like he's going to wake it. Take it. He's going he's gonna to really get hurt. My turn. Vigilance. Okay. You wear him down pretty good here. He's got to kill those Oni Cultures. He's got to kill all my guys. Celestis. He's going to gain life, which sucks. He activates it, that is. the perfected mine. Very nice. <clears throat> did, 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 did. Target player mills cards. Puts a draw on. Got him. Got him. All right. Took out Azorius Control uh, with the Artisan deck. Very nice. Okay, uh, we're going to call it right there, boys. A little bit of a struggle, but I mean, can win, can win ranks against Azorius Control with your good combos, with your good plays here. So, great starter deck for you guys. Is it going to get you to Mythic? Probably not, let's be honest. Um, uh, but uh, it'll get you somewhere. And I'll certainly get you started in the game, and I'll certainly get you interested in the game of Magic and the combos you can pull off. And it's a great little thing to build if you don't have a lot of wilds and just want to have some fun, generally. So I hope you liked it. I hope you had a good time. I've been Jay Villain, and you've been great.